extra. Just give me the light. Just give me the light. Sean Paul has been making hit records for over 20 years. Just give me the light. Records like this. Shake that thing, miss. And these. I've a promise to not bling bling for all the girls. And this. Shut up, Paul, and blue can tell Sean has got those intros to records that before the record even start, you know it's Sean Paul. He's collaborated with some of the world's biggest pop stars. As soon as you hear him on a record, you know it's Sean Paul. Sold over 26 million records and is one of Jamaica's most successful recording artists. Crazy. Whatever your age, whatever your background, Sean's music seems to connect to people from all over the world. Sean Paul makes every song better he's in. But who is the man behind the music? Where did his music come from? And why was Sean Paul so successful at turning dancehall rhythms into global pop songs? I'm Yasmin Evans and I wanted to find out. <laughs> Present on the tree, you have to them, Mad. season jerk. Cook I first met Sean on my One Extra show two years ago. Since then, he's invited me over to Jamaica to discover his roots. Mad something. Hey, Yasmin, I'm going to take you into the studio right now. Which, for my teenage self, was an absolute dream come true. Sean Paul's music and his legacy has always been so present in my life. I bought Dotty Rock as an album. I used to put it in my blazer and put my headphones up my blazer sleeve and just, like, like listening in class. On one incredible journey around Kingston, Sean treated us to an exclusive performance at the legendary Tough Gong. I got a glimpse inside his studio. People say, like, wow, you did all those big things in this small studio. I did big things from a car. Yeah. <laughs> like... And discovered how his most iconic tunes were made. I'm singing about busting bottles of Mo in Jamaica. I didn't bust a lot of bottles of Mo before. We then followed Sean from Jamaica to the UK and went behind the scenes as he prepared to play on some of Europe's biggest stages. Make some noise for Sean Paul! This is a story of how a boy from Kingston took dancehall to the world. This is Sean Paul, A Life in Rhythms. Started in an unexpected place. Here at the National Stadium pool in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. yeah, I grew up here. I think my mother and father met and made me in this pool. You made know what I mean? Yeah, Water yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my you grandfather was uh, came back from World War II, was the first Commonwealth game it was held here. Yeah. My grandfather was on that team. My mom was a backstroke champion. My aunt was a breaststroke champion, her sister, so. I used to come here to homework, sit down on that the, the diving, the diving board. board and read or try to read, flirt with all the girls them that come around and <laughs> get ready for training. 5.30 was training till about 7.30 and then do water polo game after that because I'm on both national teams. I wanted to go to the Olympics, you know, my coach had gone to the Olympics. My mom coached my coach at, wow. at some point in his life when he was younger. When I was a kid, I was, I was swimming 5,000 meters a day here. On hard days, it was seven to 9,000 meters. Oh, yeah, yeah 1,000 meters is 20 laps of this long. Over there, too. yeah. So now I'm only doing 2,000. That's, that's a lot for me now, but mm. you know, keep me in shape. And... and when you were a kid, kind of like walking over here, making your journey, you kind of like thinking about music at that time? Definitely. Yeah, right. I used to sit up in these stands and bang the. The, the whole, the whole board them and yeah and, and start you know fling lyrics at the other yeah. team. It was fun, but what music if you could remember? What music were you listening to then? Oh, definitely dancehall and hip hop. When hip hop and dancehall came in, I was about ten to twelve years old, and yeah. that was like yo, this is they're talking in my language. They're talking what we are talking at school now. What yeah. like parents it talking? It just clicked. About. Yeah, it was like. That's my music right here. Sometimes a back and some of them are rally back. We are road why you tell we not take back the chat. Sometimes a back and some of them are rally back, but we are road why you tell we not take back the chat. A lot of people used to fool around around here. Under the, what do they call it? Under the bleachers? Under the bleachers, eh? <laughs> yeah. 
trouble the ladies and are there and sometimes <laughs> war, like come to pick up war with your friends and what? You come here to pick up girls here? <laughs> well, you, you come here after school and there's, there's ladies yeah. swimming and yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Sir Jones, I right, said the young troops this. Big up, big up. This is one of the coaches. Yeah, man. BBC, yeah man. Yeah. Hi. Steve Jones. Hi Steve, yeah. nice to meet you. Yeah, We're just talking Known about him his... since, I, since I was them them them, yeah. them age. So yeah, up here is the is the spots where you is to sit on and yeah. eagle. <laughs> <laughs> And when you come here, it's kind of like um, the Sean Paul superstar goes away and you're just kind of like, you're stripped off your Superman cape at the door because everyone yeah. just seems the same here and that's wicked that you step in. Yeah. No one's better than anyone. Yeah, a lot. And because, you know, it's blood, sweat and tears that you put into the water. Yeah. Every night you, you die out there. When it's done, you're like, ah, oh, and it feels so good. You, you feel the endorphins flowing and it's definitely a big part of who I am. So even when the, the Sean Paul superstar cape guy, as you said, yeah. is, is in full effect, he's really this kid who was trying to be a swimming champion mm -hmm. most of his life right here. And humble himself to put the time in. I think he taught me humbleness, he taught me uh, to set goals, teamwork. You're here with all your friends like that. Yeah. Yo, you see that, we're going with this and that. And I go, oh yeah, you man the point, yo, swim. <laughs> Do you get the same feeling when you're on stage? When you're talking about when you were kind of like doing your, your laps in the mm -hmm. euphoria and... Yeah, my mom says the way how she saw me perform from the first time, she's like, whoa, you're springing up and down there. Mm. I have this background, so this is way more strenuous to do. Yeah. So when I'm on stage, it's, it's just natural to get very, you know, um, hype and physical and... I definitely see that sweating. Yeah, man. Front and even I'm sweating watching you because I, I can't stay still. <laughs> Our next stop was the legendary Tough Gong Studios, where Sean was about to perform something special. We are here at Tough Gong Studios. I pay homage to the man every time I'm here. I pay homage to the king, you know, to the Don. It was his birthday yesterday. So I feel like a special day now. Tough Gang was created by Bob Marley as a vision to create space for inspiring artists to make music. And it's all for black, white, Syrian, Japanese, Chinese, Indian, rich or poor. Nobody, no poor people must come here and get denied to come and let his dream or her dream come true. This is for everyone. This is Bob Marley's dream for everyone to have his own studio to help everyone. BBC One Extra uh, come tape a little vibes. They heard I was rehearsing this week. I feel good today. I'm at home, you know, near my fam, and I'm rehearsing for, for big things. Rastafara, uh, Sean Paul, a good international DJ man. Good international entertainer. Uh, good with words, uh, great performance, great artist. Rastafara, yell up Sean Paul and we big him up and we wish him all the best. Kaboom! Two major things is that I'm in a place where my grandparents were born and for the first time and I get to sort of share memories of the music that I got brought up on, the music that they used to play and Sean is in there. The music that got recorded in Tough Gong Studios is in there. Chilling the one. Yeah, it's, it's quite special, quite a special moment. Come on, so we're my eager, you know, because we're trying to get the sound right for the people, and I'm so good. But yeah, it's sounding right to me right now. But well, the expert, them, my team, them I got through the thing, making sure. But yeah, we're so ready. Sean's first big UK hit was a song called Gimme the Light. Just give me the light. It's life and living. Definitely thanksgiving. If you know the feeling, what we say, bust the wall in and seal it. Yo, just give me the light, then pass the job. Okay, give me the light. There was a producer that was like, yo, I got. I said to him I want a thousand dollars US and he was like nah got eight hundred dollars and I was like 
leave it alone, you know? Um, I had the rhythm when I was humming a, a melody. Na, 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 but I didn't get no words yet. Kinda got desperate for the eight bills, so I was like, yo, bro, still got that eight bills? He's like, yeah. So I'm like, all right, man, I'll come. I'm, I'm gonna come voice. So at the time, I was going a lot to New York. Flip more. Bust the rhyme. Bust the rhyme. Sean Paul. Sean Paul. One more time. Ah. Kill him with the rhyme. Ooh. Remix time. Remix. I'm singing about busting bottles of Mo in Jamaica. For me, I didn't bust a lot of bottles of Mo before. You know, Moet, Champagne. I was kind of drinking Guinness at the time, and it was kind of like just being in the clubs in New York, seeing that lifestyle. People coming up to me, yo, Mr. Paul, I bought you this bottle. You, you the baddest. And I'm like, oh, I don't drink champagne. But by the time I came to do this song, I was just like, just give me the light and pass the show. Bust another bottle of Mo. It was just about last weekend, basically. Freestyle most of it. Just give me the light. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah, yeah. give me the light. No, Sean has got those intros to records that before the record even starts, you know it's Sean Paul. Just give me the light. Yeah, yeah. Just give me the light. Shana Paul. Just yeah. give me the light. So, yeah, you I'm can stay. Yeah, man. You can stay for that. Just give me the light. Just give me the light. Just give me the light. Somebody got to them. Just give me the light. I'm past the job. Just give me the light before he even starts. Just give me the light and pass the joe. Give me the light did not take off right away in Jamaica. It first took off in Trinidad and Miami. The uh, reason I know Trinidad, I went to a show there and people were like, yo, you gotta sing this song. I was like, damn, didn't know that. So I went to New York and my record label at the time, they, they didn't know that song and I was like, yo, this has to be considered for the album. Actually, I'm gonna do it tonight. And a lot of people reacted in the back, like the real people that was there, not just the press people. <laughs> but they were like, yeah, boo, 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 boo. It took a few months, I would say. Um, you know, there's a, there's a cabra on that rhythm. There's also a sizzler on that rhythm. There's a beanie man on that rhythm. Those were the bigger songs at first in Jamaica, and it took a little time to build up. Dancehall rhythms, you would have one rhythm, one backing track, one instrumental, and in like the heights of this, you would have 20 cuts, 20 different songs on one rhythm. So as a DJ, we created this term called juggling, where you'll have five cuts on a rhythm, and you're mixing in between the five, six different cuts. So you're juggling that rhythm. And so many rhythms, for instance, um, Beanie Man, Who Am I, Zim Zimmer, that rhythm is a playground rhythm produced by Jeremy Hardin, who actually it used to be Sean Paul's manager. There was about 12 cuts on that rhythm. Mr. Vegas got a hit out of that rhythm. Obviously, Beanie Man got a hit out of that rhythm. Sim Sima, who got the keys to my bimma? Who am I? The girls them sugar, how can I? Make love to a fella in a rock. Sean Paul got a hit out of that rhythm. Well, woman no one on bait. Them not gonna feel by your late. If you accelerate, pan a day, the more you infiltrate. Woman the more you tear down them wall and them gates in the year. Oh, oh. Dun, 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 dun. Menacing rhythm. I've got infiltrate on dub. Sound boy up, ton, 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 ton. Sound boy up, bait. Roddy gonna kill him. And that dub gets some massive forward. That dub's what, 97? Beanie Man's Who Am I was so big that we played it to death, and then um, Sean Paul's Infiltrate was the alternative to Beanie Man's Who Am I. And I actually grew to love Infiltrate more. I heard the rhythm, and I was blown away by it. And I said, I need a dub on this from Sean Paul. Ton, 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 ton. We're in the studio. Dutty Rock Studio. Dutty Rock Studio. Yes, I'm a voice. I'm um, the song with Sia. Yeah. Just recently, Steph London voice in here with mm -hmm. a song called Shot and Wine. Do you have a producer? You feel like, okay, there's, that's one rhythm. And how does it work when you, you choose that? Back in the day, I would say, like, kids didn't have the money to gather as a group and be in a band and yeah. have the time for practice and uh, buy the drums. and it, But they did have the talent. A lot of producers would kind of see that, you know, there's a lot of kids that need the chance. Mm -hmm. And so they would start putting them on versions of the same rhythm. 
when you hear in a rhythm that you really like, and then there's just different projections on it, like some talking about girls, some talking about partying, mm -hmm. some talking about, you know, King Selassie, and you're getting all these meditations from, from this. And if you ask any DJ or any Jamaican rapper how they come up with those lyrics, is the rhythm tell you. So it's so interesting. You know, it tells you how to flow on it, and it tells you how what you must say on it. Another one of the classics that you would know would be um, the filthy rhythm. Which is um, Mr. Vegas, hit high. Kill them with the Just make a boy know you're not blow. Hit high, kill them with the no. Tell them severe gas or so. General Dugu got hit out of that rhythm. Traffic blocking, yeah, yeah, yeah. Traffic blocking, yalla come down in our pets are sucking. So many others got hit out of that rhythm. You name me a music genre that does that, where a producer can make one rhythm track and have 10, 15 different cuts for the audience to say, that's my favorite. Dance on music was, as the name suggests, music made to dance to. Uh, with Roots Rock and One Drop and Rock Steady, it's a cool and laid back beat, but dance all is boom, 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 has this incredible energy. Sean Paul was one of the people who was able to do so well on riding those dance or rhythms in all the countries where reggae is popular, with sound systems and DJs who love to play reggae music, dance hall became a part of their set, and juggling on the same rhythm was part of what they did. Dance hall music comes from within the dance hall. Turn up to any party in Jamaica and you will immediately see the importance of dancing. Hey yo, BBC One Extra. I gotta let you know we in the legendary Tough Gang. My girl Steph London in here, but I bought my sister in. Pretty, pretty, come show them what I go on. My name is Sashlika Laird, otherwise known as Pretty Pretty. In Jamaica, to have a particular move for a particular sign is very important because when that song plays, then you will have the whole streets doing that move to the song. So it will have an impact. You will see people vibing to it. So this one is called Rope. Rope. Let me teach you how to rope, and that's by Chi Ching Ching. Oh my God, he's roping! Rope, let me teach you how to rope. Rope, let me teach you how to rope. Rope, let me teach you how to rope. Tell him to the rope, and I said that's dope. He's rope. He's roping, and like the whole dance, you can imagine everybody's. It's like you're doing a lasso of a western, like, and that was Sean Paul's Chi Ching Ching's crew dancing to that. So you can imagine you're waiting for your song to come on in a club. <laughs> like, the minute, oh my God, he's roping. Can you imagine the whole club? Oh my God, he's roping. Western club. Let me teach you how to rope. Rope. Let me teach you how to rope. Rope. Let me teach you how to rope. Ching, 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 ching. The rope, it's so easy. No bathroom training required and no wall mirror needed. I'm the one who create this dance move now, okay? Rope. Let me teach you how to row, rope. Let me teach you how to row, rope. Jamaica is like the Disney World of music. You have got Disney World type characters inside an uh, event in Kingston. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them. And Sean Paul's crew is definitely part of that. Like, they get their squad, that's Sean Paul and Cha Ching Ching squad. They're out there in the streets. In Jamaica, we teach them. We have like events like seven days of the week. And each day you have like three events in one day. So that those parties is where we go to promote our stuff and teach the people how to do the moves. So everybody catches from there and that's how it spreads. So it's called promotion. To me, that you have dance hall, okay? Dance, it starts with dance, D-A-N-C, dance. So you have to dance in the hall, okay? Chi ching ching, make the dance all rock. England, Jamaica, campaign spot. Chi ching ching, make the champagne pop. Pop, 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 pop. And that helps any song that you put out there. Because if there's a dance to the song and that dance catches on, before you know it, you got a viral record. Sean Paul, Just Give Me The Life. It's a familiar song and it has a dance move for it. From here, it's ponytail, flicking, flicking, 
with a ponytail right through. Just give me the light and pass it on. But I never back up, you know. I like the vibes and I get, mm-mm. With Spanish and I get my own. I'm in the vibe, yo. I'm on Tila dancing. So to have a song and have a dance move for it, very important. Sean Paul is somebody you reach for as a DJ when you need to bust a dance. I have a crate in my music selection called the Panic Crate. And when the dance floor's proving tough, we go into the Panic Selection. And I have a few Sean Paul dubs that get me out of that panic because his music instantly fills people with joy. Sean has got that knack of getting universally, getting women dancing getting the party started. A bit of festival, a bit of more underground shops, and particularly when I need the dance floor filling, hence the panic, he's necessary. He's like been in my record box for 15 to 18 years. And the culture of Bashman is girls dancing. And I don't know if you heard of like walking and all the dances that go with it. Like it's a music that's synonymous with having a good time. When you listen to it, as a British person, you, you think of the sun, you think of like good vibes, you think of beautiful people. And so obviously when you hear Sean Paul spit, it brings back all those feelings. And yeah, it just gets the girls going mad. <laughs> all right, so yes, where, have you, where have you brought me to now? Well, you said you want to come record, right? Yeah. So we're there at the studio. Dutty Rock Studios. Where all the magic happens. Where the gang gang live, you know? This is our vibe thing. We vibe out here in the night. Everyone's chilling out. We're in there recording. Yeah. Speaking of which, shall we? Come, Come on, welcome Come to on. my crib like MTV. Yeah. Welcome to my studio. <laughs> yeah, we're about um, the gang gang yeah. um, TV track and you do your thing. So go on. Oh no. Put, on some food. Put me on the spot, please. <laughs> gang, 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 gang. Like Steph London. With the bang, Boy. bang, 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 bang. Big up, man. Gang, gang, gang. <laughs> she needs, she needs. She, she, she needs rehearsal. Big up, man. Gang, keep up to the chance to report them. Gang, keep up to the chance to report them. Whoa, yes. All right, you guys get on now. She's gonna record. <laughs> Come, ready. All right. <laughs> Mud so. But I mean, we probably should get down to conversation though. All right, let's do that first and then we'll make albums, all right? Let's do that. Business first and then... Pleasure. Business pleasure after. Got you. And then pleasure, pleasure after that. You got, you're touching the road tonight with us, right? Yeah, yeah. Right, so. I'm scared. <laughs> Don't be scared. Just keep your mind in gear. <laughs> I'm looking around now and I can see a few plaques on the wall. Yeah. This Sean is the Sean that it all started for with me. The braided. The braided Sean. You've got so much of a catalogue of music. Yeah, man. We could be here for hours. Hours. You have time? I've got time. <laughs> I've plenty of time. Shake that thing, miss. Can I, can I shake that thing, miss? And I better shake that thing, yeah. Donna, Donna, Jordy and Rebecca. Woman, get busy. Just shake that so Get Busy Now was actually written by me and my brother, Jigs Aguila. Big up, Jigs. Wow. Um, he, I, I was writing this this song which had all these lyrics in it. And he was like, mm -hmm. yo, people love you for the melody, bro. So take it, take it melody-wise in the verse. And, and then the hook should be like, and he started singing this. Na, 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 na. I was like, damn, it's bad. Sean Paul Get Busy is part of the Diwali rhythm. The Wally rhythm was one of the biggest rhythms, dancehall rhythms, in the early part of the millennium, produced by um, Lenky. Now, you had obviously the big cut from Wayne Wonder. Killer had a big cut that worked in like the real hardcore dances. If you go deeper into Bashman and listen to like Assassin, Vibes Cartel, Capleton and all those people, it's harder to understand what they're saying where Sean had a way of delivering it, where it sounded passionate, it was vibey, but you could also understand what he's saying. I think a lot of it is a language barrier. I'm able to, I'm someone able to speak, you know, in a, in a little tongue where people can understand me. 
or someone speaking a more hardcore patois, it's kind of hard for people to understand. So that's a big factor. But it's just like the Latin music right now. I mean, a lot of people here don't speak Spanish, but you know, the... they don't know what he's saying, but they say that too. He just always seemed to find a pocket that was so easy to remember and so catchy. Time for the pops one time. This is Sunday ball. I kill him with a rhyme, but let them know. Yo, yo. That whole rhythm was crazy. And if I remember rightly, Get Busy was one of the last cuts on that rhythm. This was during the, the run that Sean had. Like, everything Sean Paul touched was ridiculous. Sometimes in the middle of the day, people's shoes ain't open, so we would drive around in the car smoking and just writing this song. We drive away up in the hills. Just remembering those days, it kind of takes you to the bare essentials. That way yeah. people see it like this small studio that I'm in. Now they're like, wow, you did all those big things in this small studio. I did I did big things from a car. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow. You know, it's the same, it's mm -hmm. the same energy. So once you have that energy, no matter where you are, you, you can you can vibe a good vibe. You know the club, them one flex with us. Again, next to us, them now flex with us. Anyone who knows Sean Paul knows that the Get Busy video is one of the first like that really resonated with a lot of people. I think it's um, in a basement of someone's house. There's sweat coming on the walls. It kind of paints a picture of the kind of parties I've played in. Shake that thing, miss, kinda, kinda. Anytime I play that record in the clubs, it doesn't matter what color, creed, race, wherever you come from, all of them start shaking their, their bottoms. Even the video for Light Glue. That whole basement vibe, people hitting the walls and all the rest of it. At any given time you play a Sean Paul record in any kind of club, you can actually tell people, right, now we're gonna party like it's the light blue video. Okay, light glue. Um, I, have, I had a song called Give Me the Light, and um, I just wanted to, to find like a little intro for it, like I would do on stage shows. And I was smoking and I was praying like, well, you know, just what I'm gonna sing for the intro of this Give Me Light. So it was like, well, I don't really care what people say. I don't really watch what them want to do. Still, I got to stick to the girls like glue. Yo, me not play number two. All I know, the time is getting dread. Need a lot of trees up in my head. Yo, just give me the light and pass it. So that's how I, I started that hook. It was just an intro for the Give Me the Light. I was doing that for a few weeks. And then I saw Tony Kelly, who is a big producer, producer of a lot of songs for Supercat. And if anybody knows me, Supercat's like the, my father in the business. Baby girl, you will love now to now you met him now whenever. Supercat, the Wild Apache Indian. He's revered as one of the great Jamaican DJ stroke MC stroke rappers. Even at a time when like he was with all them MCs, Shaka Demas and all them man there, his voice sounded different. He embraced the fact that, you know what I mean, he was like Indian Jamaican and just cadence, flow, yeah. you know what I mean, style. There was definitely a connection. You could hear it vocally in the tone and style of Sean Paul. You could kind of feel the lineage going back to Supercat. I was like, what about this? And he loved it. He was like, that's dope. Uh, both of us kind of collaborated on, on the verses, but I have a big up Tony Kelly, he, his input was very necessary at the time to get that song popping, you know? Gimme the Light, Get Busy and Light Glue all featured on Sean's second album, Dutty Rock, in 2002. The album catapulted Sean onto the world stage with TV appearances and international shows quick to follow. At the 2004 Grammy Awards, Sean Paul's Dutty Rock won Best Reggae Album. When I started, the career, I didn't, I didn't ever think about a Grammy. Grammy yeah. I, didn't, I, I just I wanted to spit, and I wanted my own country to appreciate my music. Because like sitting at school or at the stadium, and you're beating on the desk and making these rhythms and spitting, it's just a, it's a pastime. Mm. Everybody does it. I just never think, oh, I'm going to take this and win a Grammy with it. I didn't think. Yeah. That. I did think that I make bangers that go into clubs though, because I used to travel for, to play water polo and swim in the Caribbean and 
you know, Miami and uh, Orlando. And we would go to the clubs and I'd hear dance out and it would always excite me. Like, yo, he's playing everywhere, but don't play on the radars or TV, but that's dope. It's my music. I love it. So that's what I wanted to accomplish, like having my own country and people in my culture just love my music. Yeah. So then when, when a Grammy happened, like, it's something I didn't fathom. So it's almost like you're watching someone else do it. Like, yeah, yeah. Like I was like, oh, wow, it was a, it's a world. He's a Grammy award-winning dancehall artist. Not long after winning his Grammy, another huge rhythm came along, which Sean would soon make his own. The applause rhythm. Some of the big songs on that rhythm was Sizzler. Big long gun and run out on them. Hexa load the pad and out on them. Crazy from ring, ring, ding, ding, ding. Ring, 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 Sean, when I put a song on that rhythm, temperature rising. The way the time pull, I want to be keeping you warm. I got the right temperature for shelter you from the storm. And he just sidestepped everything, like, you lot are over there in that lane, great for you lot. I like this rhythm, I'm going to do something with this song. The way the time pull, I want to be keeping you warm. I got the right temperature to you from the storm. In the lyrics of temperature, I have, a, I, have a, I have a part where I say, the way the time cold, I want to be keeping you warm. It was a January 2005, and it was cold. It was cold for, for Jamaica, a cool climate. But also, it was really cold in terms of how we were treating each other in Jamaica. A lot of people were dying by the gun. I just kind of wanted to write a song where it was like, yo, this, this is cold right now, but, you know, let me, ha let me have all the girls, let me take care of them. With his combination of melody, dance and lyricism, Sean Paul took dancehall to the mainstream on a global scale. He was selling millions of records, topping charts in multiple countries and shining a light on Jamaican ridden culture. My voice is in my vocal, lock off your phone so your man don't call. I'm gonna give it his love, total medical, and it's on the toe that, oh yeah. Boop, boop, boop. Sean Paul was turning into a genuine pop star. But what did people back in Jamaica think? I got the right temperature fish shelter you from the storm. Oh Lord, girl, I got the right tactics to turn you on and girl, I be the papa, you can be the mom. Oh, oh. I know Sean Paul because he used to play water polo with my big sister. And I know that he's from, you know, what we would call uptown Kingston, right? And he was, you know, definitely exposed to a lot of the things that uptown people have, you know, the good schools, great opportunities, whatever. You know, Jamaica, unfortunately, we kind of try to see people from where they're from. And so Sean definitely got a lot of flack for maybe his background. People never really want to give him the forward, as we like to say. You know, but at the same time, he has literally become a reggae dancehall ambassador for Jamaica in our generation in this time. I come from a place called Arnett Garden. There now, at the bottom of where I live, it's called Trenstown, where you have Bob Marley them come from. Uptown is just a place that we from downtown dream of owning a house uptown. When you say a youth from uptown embrace reggae like how Sean Paul embrace it, you understand? Because you know, say, most uptown people, they don't go want them pick me and do them kind of thing. They call them and look upon that and say, that's not a good career move. So. Sean Paul is a youth from the uptown boy and represent the ghetto. You know, you can come from anywhere and represent your country. Um, Jamaica doesn't have one face. We're out of many one people, right? So Sean has, has broken that barrier. And um, also, I mean, he's brought a freshness to the industry. His voice is like um, recognizable. It has that tone. He has that strength and that power and that creativity. So if people want a collab in dancehall, who do they call? Sean Paul. <laughs> Sean Paul has collaborated with some of the biggest artists in the world. Beyonce, Rihanna, Busta Rhymes, Major Lazer, David Guetta, Blue Cantrell. Crazy. 
Reminisce for all the good times daily Why you trying to pose like I be acting shady What's that? That Brew Cam trial record was I, mean, I remember playing that daytime on Kiss FM I rinsed that record out Every single day I had a daytime show That was just absolutely enormous that record See? There's an example I'm going to burn it on a CD and start playing it again. I've forgotten about it. Since his early hits, Sean has proved that he isn't slowing down anytime soon. Sean's most commercially successful year came in 2016, when massive collabs with Dua Lipa, Little Mix, Clean Bandit and Sia all had huge chart success. Just you and me. When, as a DJ, you play his records, his voice is immediately recognisable, the tone, the style. He guests on so many other people's records, but he never compromises who he is. He's always Sean Paul. I always joke about people like him. You have like pianos, drums, guitars, Sean Paul, bass section. Like his voice is like instantly recognisable, like literally an instrument. I always say to people, you love Sean Paul? And I say, yeah. I say, sing me some Sean Paul verses and they always struggle. I say, sing me some Paul, some Sean Paul hooks, and they know all his hooks. And that's the key. Yeah, come oh, on. He's a genius. There's not a moment he comes on the radio where you're not like, come on. He makes driving fun. I don't care what you're doing. You can be stuck in traffic and he comes on and he want to dance. I think my favorite collaboration of recent times is when Sean Paul did that tune with Clean Bandit, uh, Rockabye. <laughs> And I heard it and I said I need to sing this and I flew home and recorded it. At that point I didn't know Sean Paul was going to be on it. What bar did you meet him for this to happen? <laughs> well, um, it's always been a massive dream to work with Sean Paul. We grew up listening to his music. And I think the first time we saw each other was at X Factor performance. And Marie, we, we um, saw her playing live at festivals last year and we're just like, wow, who is that? It was an amazing song, but I feel like with him on it, it just took it to that next level. Clean bandit, Chanda Paul and Marie sing met them She works on night. You're just like, oh, yeah, just singing a song. But then when you think about it afterwards, you're just like, right, this guy has done songs with the biggest people in the world and here I am on stage with him doing my own song. Sean Paul, that, is that a wrong step? Like, that might be a bit poppy, bro. Like, and then he just comes on and he goes, Don't me, baby, and he just, it just sounds official. Like, he just brings a unique energy to the records and just makes it feel way more credible. The Rockabye video with Clean Bandit and Anne-Marie has racked up over 2.1 billion views on YouTube, making it one of the top 30 most watched YouTube videos of all time. It makes me feel amazing that it's been viewed that many times, but also I wish I did like look a bit better in it. <laughs> because I look pretty butters in that video. Massive pop songs, a catalogue of collabs and his own dancehall classics, Sean has a hell of a lot of tunes to pack into a set. In 2019, he was invited to perform at Radio 1's Big Weekend in Middlesbrough. Let's see Sean Paul. His music's really current, anyone can listen to it. It's a party vibe, we always listen to it when we're getting ready. So Sean DePaul, it's called the Middlesbrough. It's a massive to put the globe on the stove right now. The fire. Dotty Paul in concern. Shana Paul. Yeah, we're heading to the main stage right now. The big weekend festival. To be direct. Middlesbrough. Bro. 
bro. Big up. Yeah, man. Mad star from the bit. Mm -hmm. Thank you, bro. Yeah, well, the Bossy video and song came about by Wiley, kind of, you know, conceptualizing the whole thing. And Steph Landon, he reached out to her. She reached out to me. I'm not sure how you got involved. Who, who's, who linked you up with the vid? Henry's the guy who made it. Yeah. So, you know, like, this, like, like Wiley's like, never hear for anything. Mm -hmm. I have to be Wiley, basically. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we have BBC Radio 1 Big Weekend and it's a big weekend because this dude's on it and me's on it and we're going to blaze them with fire out there. You know what I mean? When the rain drop, the fire touch it, beer steam come off it. You know what I'm saying? Mad people thing. In school where everyone knows me now, like even, even on the streets, so they're like, oh, it's him for the video. <laughs> Yo, people was asking me, hey, that little kid Wiley, he got a deep voice. I was like, what? So they thought you was Wiley. Yeah, I know. It's funny. And I write for myself, no ghosting. Needs a boy, got money in a bank on. Ready for roll and blaze up this tank on. Got the girls from Jam 1 to Hong Kong. The girl, them champion. In it. Yeah, Boasty videos in Peckham Rye, they invited me down because I'd worked on the record. Peckham was awesome, uh, basically, because I saw a lot of my hometown people on the side of the road just, just giving me vibes and giving me uh, good energy, you know, all the Jamaican peeps and a nice little crowd did get around. You know what I mean? But we had to go to Peckham super early because he had to cut to go to our next show in the country. So I'm in Peckham right early in this amazing Caribbean food spot. Sean was a, a professional on time. He got a Jamaican breakfast from the place we shot it in. But when they told me I had to slap it around back at head, <laughs> it's like, hey, my 12 year old self buying down south 45s in Foxes in Sheffield was like, what? And then in the modern time, he was like, I can't slap Sean ball around back at head. Bossy. I described it as a dream come true from a DJ's point of view. Mm. And you got a tune that, you know what I mean, you sort of like... Because in my head, <clears throat> I just, there was no version of me rapping on this tune. It was like, that's a big tune. Heard the original, I said to Wiley, yo, if you ever do a remix, let me do it for you. More mm. like, let me find some mashups I could throw on top of it type thing. Yeah. And then he called me out and was like, go on then. <laughs> Get on it. I heard what you did with Skeppy and them, I'm gonna do it. I was like, oh, uh, okay. And then next thing you know, we this record, which is now honestly a worldwide record, like in Japan they're playing both you get me? Everybody pile up on that thing, I'm taking all the girls in my lap. Yo, you don't know for sure. Dirty, yeah. Woo. I seen a glimpse of, of, of what's out there. Seems like a big crowd, but I'm not afraid of dragons. I slew them all the time. Nah, I mean, mad people think. Hey, what's that? Ow, ow, ow. Nervous as fuck. Really? <laughs> But it's gonna be amazing, so excited. First time ever dancing with Dutty Ball, so we ready to wow out. Dance hall, are you crazy? It's like the, the essence of being Caribbean and enjoying the vibes and the energy. Like this audience is about to lose their mind. I'm about to lose my mind. <laughs> we came here to make everybody have a good time, so yeah, we're gonna blaze the fire. Blaze the fire upon a dragon. Woo! Hey! 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 Make some noise! Yeah. It's a wonderful yeah. feeling right now. We're on the main stage of one of the biggest events right now. Shout out to the boss, Sean Paul. Man, because I said shout out to the whole England. Again, I said, love now we are for everyone. We need to show them one or two moves because they don't know dancing is life. All right, who's ready for the next act? You know, we just try to warm up and get to heart and pump. Sing, shy, shy. One of the biggest, if not the biggest, artist to come out of Jamaica. Make some noise for Sean Paul! People say, what's your bliss? What's your energy? Where you get your energy mm. from? I get it from being here in the studio mm -hmm. and performing it to the crowds that enjoy it. 
And that's been a lot of people and that has just been awesome. It might seem to a lot of people that like, my, my rise was just instant. Right. But yeah. it's been up and down. It's not all jet plane mm -hmm. trips, right? Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of moments, but those are the times where I get to be the humble person and reconnect back with, with, yeah, with my fam and you know, the people who were just at the stadium with. And live a more normal setting type yeah. of life. And sometimes I'm like, damn, I'm you know, touring too much this year. And, I long for the times where I can yeah. take a friend to the beach and get him some hellsha fish. Despite performing all over the world, it's clear that Sean's home and heart is still in Jamaica. His humility carries him a long way. You'll see him in Jamaica on his own, in his car, doesn't travel with a gang or a posse. He helps people, he gives new artists hope by encouraging them, by recording them for his own productions. So it's not just about Sean Paul, it's about the music and the culture of Jamaica. And he's a very proud Jamaican. Before I left Kingston, there was just one last thing he wanted us to record at Tough Gong. Um, it's special for me today because I'm not only doing a performance for me, but my whole gang is here, you know? I produce a, a, a rhythm called Gang Gang. Uh, and a couple very established artists and a couple younger artists um, appear on the rhythm, so they're going to come on with me today on the taping and kind of vibe up the vibes. He's about to bring out Spraga Benz, Agent Sasko, Ching, and loads of other artists to do the Gang Gang rhythm. I'm super, super excited. It's hot and sweaty in there. And what I like about Sean is he'll go and do a tune with Sia, which is like super pop, and then I'll go and do something in his own label that's super hardcore, and it's balanced, and he keeps it raw in that sense. He can dip in and out and he's respected from both worlds. It's just really hard to pull off. Okay, so they're inside and I'm really excited to see them all perform together. This is the first time that they have been together. So this is the first time ever you're seeing this. Yasmin, this thing is strange. Crazy. Oh, Straight crazy, so it's it. Put a bang, bang, bang. Shonda Paul with the version. Yeah. Again. We lockin' it just like that. The dirty rock crew, them get intact. Move to the left on me, move to the right on me. Capital and take your girl out of sight, look on me. Right, my right all night, all night, boy. Make sure you turn on your headlight. There's something magical that happens in a studio when a microphone is opened and a rhythm starts to play and an artist sings or DJs or raps. Sean Paul knows how to make hit records and that's why in 97, 2007, 2017, he's over 20 years in the game. And he's maintained a standard which makes him popular and, and, and loved. This is, this is his unique contribution to music and to Jamaican culture. From sneaking the Dutty Rock album into school as a 12-year-old to actually going to Jamaica to see where Sean's tunes were made, this has been a journey I'll never forget. His melodies, hooks, dance moves and lyrics have made him a global superstar. Yet he's never forgotten his roots and he continues to produce credible dancehall tracks with both new and established artists. When you witness the effect his music has on crowds thousands of miles from Kingston, from Glastonbury to Middlesbrough, it's amazing just to think how far Sean Paul has come and where he began. A young swimmer dreaming of music on this small island in the Caribbean Sea. Hey yo, BBC. Hello. It's been a great vibe. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm having us forward too. We got the bottom band, we got Red Square, we got Dutch Rock Entertainment. You know it go. Money matters. But the bang bang bang. Bless them. Up. Thank you all. Appreciate the vibe.